really listening with our whole being and noticing, you know, how what we hear, how that impacts us on a bodily level. So the really feeling and sensing how our body is responding to what we are hearing. And, you know, we don't have to work hard, but just really getting back to the body itself rather than being lost and trying to make meaning by thinking. So and allowing the breath to take us into the body and allowing you know, our nervous system to guide us, feeling the weight, the gravity, which pulls us you know, towards the soil, towards the ground underneath where we are sitting right now. Because, you know, that's where this body comes from. It has emerged out of the mystery and it's going to go back into it when the time comes. And these days with, you know, all of the challenges which we can't really handle on an intellectual level, we all need to find our way back to the beginning by sensing, by feeling, by bringing this capacity back into our lives more. After centuries, you know, of having trained the thinking capacity and overemphasized it, and now we are becoming aware, you know, of the limitations of that approach, that it's no longer. no longer enough. So this old narrative is starting to crumble and we can align ourselves with that process by attuning and sensing more deeply into what is already happening. We don't have to do it. We are just paying attention. So reality is already doing the job and we're paying attention more directly by training the capacity to sense and feel and really embody ourselves. And you know, by paying attention to our roots in the planet, that really helps us to land in the moment. So just noticing, you know, if that comes easy to you to land, or maybe it's difficult. Don't force anything, just noticing.
and allowing the breath to take us deeper. And just taking a screenshot, you know, of how you are, your mind, emotions and body. You know, how stressed are you right now? What are you bringing to this moment here in the group? So building this capacity to connect first, you know, with ourselves, our own experience in the body. And then by building this capacity, we can also much deeper connect with others and with the biosphere around us, with a more than human world. And not by thinking about it, but by like sensing you know, sensing this non separation. You know, and letting go of that expectation of ma mastery and, and control, but taking in that we can't know everything. We are not a special species. And that there is like a biointelligence in the living planet itself that is much older and larger than what human intelligence can fathom. Just allowing that to be true. And that we can connect through sensing in the body because the planet and the body are one. We have, you know, done meditations where we have been seeing that we never cut the umbilical cord through eating and drinking and breathing and sweating, going to the bathroom. We are in constant exchange with the planet and its elements. And those elements, you know, which make up the planet, they come from stars which have exploded and the Stardust has been, you know, clumping up in certain areas and then planets were formed. So it's an amazing process. We cannot really get our thinking mind around that, but we can sense into it.
that there is an intelligence working which cannot be controlled. We do have some agency, but limited agency. And this is what we are now starting to fully meet as a civilization. Who originally thought that by science and technology, we can control those processes much more than we actually can. And now we're coming back. We're coming back to the ground. And this is an evolutionary threshold which we need to pay attention to. We need to bring the capacity back to sense and feel and be with the highs and lows and the pains and the losses of being alive. We can't make that go away through science and technology. We need to learn again to be part of this flow. We can't show ourselves off into some kind of uh, special place because we are utterly and completely part of it. But the fact of the, having those bodies So, you know, learning to trust the intelligence of those bodies again. And then having tried to sidestep feeling and sensing has led us to a lot of difficult problems, you know, because the suppression of feelings makes exploitation possible, such as, you know, like resource exploitation and racism. Patriarchy, sexism, all of those isms and schisms are the result of the suppression of feelings and sensing, of not, not being attuned. And now, you know, it's all converging into a poly crisis. And it's not like our personal doing, but this is just the evolutionary process of maturing. You know, suppressing feeling makes us unable to mature. Trying to sidestep feelings keeps us immature. And that's where we are right now as a species. And that's just the way it is. So you're not really sitting with that. 
is needed. And I'm noticing that we are just like in a very, you know, vast, mis mysterious process. We are inside of that. And we have had dreams, you know, of independence and control and mastery, which are now just dropping away. And the way, you know, to work with that is feeling and sensing coming alive. Because in that feeling and sensing is the seed for updating our systems, updating our practice, updating our work, updating everything in the world by being more embodied. You know, even our spiritual systems have been, you know, permeated by patriarchy, of course. And transcendence, transcendence was the big word. And now we start to see now there needs to be a balance. There also needs to be embodiment. The body is an amazing biocomputer which has been developed over billions of years. And it's been handed to us the body is not just like a burden, the body is also a manifestation of great intelligence and a way how we can stay connected with the planet itself. So we can come back to training the capacity to connect and to attune. That's what the world needs right now. So true willingness you know, to stand on this threshold and being willing to let go of this old narrative of transcendence, of separation, of mind over matter. And there's a lot of you know, speaking about the merchants these days in all circles. And you know, we can sense that in the body. That something new wants to be born. And I said the old systems are crumbling. The cracks you know, are showing. 
and through those cracks, the light comes through. So, you know, being okay with those cracks, not turning away from them. You know, that's what the meditation practice is so perfect for, you know, the, the capacity to focus, capacity to stay with the uncertainty and the fear, you know, which will come up and being okay with that. We are not made, you know, to go this alone. We are mammalians and mammalians are dependent on other mammalians for safety and for action together. So community is crucial for our health and for planetary health. So we are sensing into the body. Just breathing into it. So with an attitude, you know, of invitation and opening to whatever wants to be known at this time. When you're noticing, you know, the mind wanders off into thinking, just, you know, gently bringing it back. You know, by sensing our rootedness in the planet.
and at the same time really relaxing, relaxing into that deep interconnectedness through eating and drinking, breathing, Well, the, the man of Thich Nhat Hanh, you know, coined that word interbeing, which is such a beautiful word for exactly that. Nothing exists from its own side. And today I have uh, brought a poem by Ben Okri, who is a Booker Prize winning author and poet. And that poem was in The Guardian last Saturday. And a friend sent it to me and I thought it's very beautiful. Um, to just, you know, sitting with an open mind or with an open heart and allow that to just drop into the space. It's quite a long poem and I'm just gonna read it really slowly. And it's from his book, Tiger Work, a collection of stories, essays and poems about the climate crisis. And this uh, poem is called Earth Cries. You know, and if you're just noticing, sensing in the body what comes up when you hear this, maybe you think, oh, just not another poem about the climate crisis. Or maybe not. And just attuning with the body as a part of the land of the planet and how that responds. Because there's a lesson for us to learn, you know, an evolutionary lesson which we either learn or do not. That needs to be seen, but we could at least, you know, we could try for the future generations. If we could make it possible for them to have a place to live. Earth cries, words for the day, denial, justice, right to protest, and earth cries. Oh, when will we wake up? Gulf Stream dying. Days end approaching. Climate migrants. Oil spills. Global boiling carbon emissions, 
net zero fossil fuel nightmare wandering rage of the world trying to find a home Who will give this crisis hanging over us a voice that can open the hearts and minds of the people? Disasters coming. No amount of hiding can hide it. The young crave truth. Only truth will save us. Have to wake up before night comes. Shadows are rushing towards us. Earth is shaking. Insects are perishing. Flowers are mourning. When will truth come? When will we have the courage to give this hour in history its true name? How many of us must perish before the governments make the climate crisis a priority. We are the not so slow suicide of the world. We are the not so fast saviors of the world. Oh, what I would give to have one person wake up to the truth of our world for every microsecond that they poison the air, the sea and the forests. If we rise up as one in peace and truth and beauty, will they listen? Must we scream to be heard? Must the earth bleed to be nurtured? Has the world not bled enough? How do you get the ears of the world to listen without fear? And to listen with courage? We need a new language that howls and caresses at the same time. A 
a new language that frightens and gives hope simultaneously. That tells the truth and transcends the truth in the same breath. For the human being is a frail vessel that cannot take the light. And yet cannot face the darkness. Must we become a new species? Must the human being be remade anew? to face the tough truths of the times. There's no time for this renewal. We have to become new right now. For time will not wait for us in all the evils and poisons we have spewed into the belly and soul of nature. Time will not wait for us to grow up and see what can be done when we have had a long think about it. Because of what we human beings have done, we have to accelerate our own transformation now. In the teeth of the crisis, we have afflicted upon ourselves. No gods will get us out of this. We are the gods that must do it. We are the gods that must step up to the biggest crisis in the history of human consciousness as we know it. We are the gods that must turn this story around. I'm not sure the bees or the trees or the fishes or the air or the future generations care very much how we do it. All that we care about is that somehow with intelligence, with passion, with sacrifice, with our voices, our votes, our gifts, our rage, our laugh, our wounds, with our disabilities, our courage, our certainties, our doubts, our fears, our loneliness, our solidarity, our style or lack of style, our clumsiness, our youth, our age, our death, and our births, that we get it done. That we reverse the climate disaster, waiting in the wings of the sixth act of the human comedy or tragedy. All they will care about is that we make a now, a past, a dream, a hope, 
a life, a future possible again for the species of this magical earth. That is what we are called to do. That's our destiny in these times. That's what we are called to do. That's our destiny in these times. And that's not something, you know, which can be done with the intellect. That's why we need to return to sensing and feeling our embodiment. And so that, you know, connecting with this much vaster, more than human intelligence which is the only intelligence which is up to this job. So you now as we're allowing that to sink in, this poem by Ben Okri, just you know, reflecting on what would you like your remaining breath? to support in this planet process we are all part of. So you now opening ourselves to this much wider context. letting go of this hyper-individualism we have been conditioned into over the last 50 or more years. Consumer capitalism, with all of its promises, in which are all starting to crumble now, because the earth can't support this. It's a dream, a nightmare, really. So adjusting our perception to who we are, what we are doing here, and then you know, becoming a team player. Again. You know, there's uh, indigenous teachings who come to us also teaching us about that. So still, you know, living in this awareness of interdependence. And we can rekindle that knowing in ourselves as well. Updating our worldviews. growing into a new narrative. And doing it together. Because it's scary and it can't be done alone. It's already happening. It's just like we are opening the doors and inviting it in through, you know, practicing together in this way.
And you know, before we are ending the sit today, we can also allow you know the ancestral wisdom to come in, all that has come before us to support us in this work. You know, for the benefit of all sentient beings. You know, may this ancestral wisdom support us so that we also will become good ancestors. Doing our job at this point in time on this threshold where we, it will be decided, you know, through our own doing if our species is going to go extinct or not. We can all play a little tiny role in that. For our own species and beyond. Just sensing you know, what that brings up in the body again. Maybe just like a blank. That's okay. Just open. So we are on this threshold together and we can support each other. But you know, not turning away from it. 